Hey, we're back. Did you miss us? I missed us. There's a lot of Umineko happening this week. There really is. I'm so happy. For, I, I, we're, I'm, I'm glad we took our break because when we're coming back and doing it now, I'm so happy to be back in it. Fucking pumped. I, I, I'm, I'm loving every moment of this. Yeah. The rain was still pouring down hard as ever. This weather was supposed to continue all day tomorrow as well, which made me feel a little bit depressed. Oh, wait. <laughs> Given the time, I should say today, not tomorrow. But that doesn't really matter now. I'm sleepy. With half-asleep eyes, I opened my umbrella. The large drops of rain pounded mercilessly against it. Technically, the end of the family conference had been declared at 1 a.m. But external scuffles kept continuing sluggishly. I'm really jealous of Aunt Rosa, who managed to slip out of there at the time. Interesting. She cleverly got away by saying that she'd check on Maria, who might have been staying up too late. Dad caught me, ruining my chance to escape. And they made me stick around until... Now... 3 a.m.? Fucking weakling. Only 3 a.m.? Right. So, what have they decided on after all this time? Nothing at all. They just kept on arguing about who said what like elementary school kids. I'm sure they're tired, too. It's probably why they keep dragging on with the same pointless questions. I no longer felt any shock or anger towards them. I guess drowsiness is the best painkiller. Interesting to note that Rosa did leave there. Yeah. So while we're trying to account for people. Uh, we were talking about who we thought was on the phone. Yeah. Right? And I think the name we came down on, like, because it could only be, like, uh, we, we at the end of the episode, we narrowed it down to who it could possibly be, right? If it was coming from inside the if island. If it was coming from inside the island. And I think the one that we pinned as most likely here is Kumasawa. Um, because she's been around the longest, right? She's been on this island for a very long time. Uh, has The game has said explicitly that she likes to listen in and likes to keep secrets and knows way more than she lets on. Uh, this could be her doing. I don't know why. I don't know what her motive is. But it seems more likely her than Gota or Nanjo. Does that make sense? Mm. Or it could be Erica. Yeah. <laughs> or it could be Erica, yeah. Well, no, Erica's not the culprit. We know that. Yeah, but... Yeah, Erica's not the culprit. Could have been the person who placed the call. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, also, she managed to survive because she was wearing a life jacket. Huh. Lumineko has a good message for everyone. Wear a fucking life jacket. At all times. At all times. You could be drowning on land right now. <laughs> oh, no. I'm not going to sleep tonight. I'm going to be worried about that. I'll be drowning. Don't. I left them behind and finally returned to the guest house. A little light on in the... I love wherever they took these uh, photos. When I got back to the guest house, the first floor lounge was lit. I could even hear people chatting inside. Apparently some people were still awake even this late. Despite the late hour, Godasan and Dr. Nanjo were still up and chatting. Interesting. Okay. Plates and cups were lined up on the counter and it almost looked like a bar with Godasan as the bartender. When they noticed I had returned, they seemed to finally realize how late it was. Because we don't know how much Goda knows here. I think yeah. I, from, from the clarification of how these magical scenes work, right? Or scenes where there are only so many witnesses. Mm -hmm. I think we are forced to reevaluate what we saw in Chapter 2 with Cannon in the, in, the, uh, in the servant room. And it seems like at that point they brought Gota on board or at least got Gota to buy their story and, mm. and share that story. Yeah. So I'm still thinking he's generally an outsider because we don't see him we, like he's definitely like he wasn't part of the original group there. Mm -hmm. uh, neither were Shannon or Kana, but they were clearly explicitly brought in later. I think it's safe to say Gota is probably still an outsider to the machinations of the KDA. This is interesting, given that he's the one who's specifically called out as having been brought on by Natsuhi. Yeah. Well, like, I'm sure she brought him on. And my original thought was that she brought him on to have someone uh, to combat against the KDA, which is clearly not the case. Um, I still think she might have hired him for some other expertise, but, you know, that's obviously a bit of a stretch. When Godasan made, uh, made to top off Dr. Nanjo's glass, the latter declined with an exaggerated gesture. Oh, good. I love exaggerated gestures. Uh, do one. Ugh. Good. It's not very exaggerated. I'm sorry. 
it was good enough. Oh, look how late it's gotten. You were such a good person to chat with, I hardly noticed. <laughs> If so, it's all thanks to your record. We'll have to do this again sometime. Oh, yeah, gladly. Battler-sama, welcome back. Would you like a nightcap? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little tipsy myself, so I mean, if you're going to take one, now's the time to take advantage of it, right? A nightcap? My head doesn't get cold when I sleep. Uh, all right, none for you. <laughs> Is the discussion with Krauss-sama and the others still continuing? <laughs> From the way things were going, it looks like they might plot on until dawn. It's none of my business. I spoke carelessly with a big yawn. They have quite a lot of stamina. <laughs> you sure you don't want an eye cap, Adler? <laughs> <laughs> the absinthe here is to die for. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so you're here too, huh? Oh, with one thing and another, they ended up having a small night party here. And they let me join in. Don't worry, I haven't said a word about that. Erica could be seen on the sofa. She had taken her shoes off and was lounging around as though she owned the place. How old is Erica again? She's like a child, right? She's, oh, she's a kid age. I, I, I think they told us at one point and I've now forgotten. I, I think she she's not an adult. Mm -hmm. I, I think is the important part. She had taken her shoes off and was now lounging around as though she owned the place. Oh, Erkosan was very knowledgeable in a variety of subjects. I enjoyed listening to her immensely. <laughs> Why is everyone fucking... <laughs> Bernie's OC Do Not Steal is really getting uh, <laughs> Mary sued here, huh? It's pretty expensive. Very impressive for one so wrong. Well, you're very welcome. I, Bruto Erica, know quite a bit about trifles such as this. Erica grabbed the corners of her skirt and posed. This was somewhat less than graceful, considering that she was lounging on the sofa with her feet up. <laughs> Where's Aunt Rosa? Oh, she returned at 1 a.m., but she went straight upstairs to go to sleep. That's probably true. After taking part in that conference for so long, I feel like flopping down in bed right away myself. <sighs> I've had it. I'm tired enough that I might flop over right here. Don't you have to get a burger tomorrow morning to make breakfast, got a Preparations for breakfast have already been made. I'm just gonna toss it in the microwave. <laughs> None of you fuckers know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> I would be most pleased if you looked forward to it. It's a meal to die for. Is everyone just saying that, like, I just said it off the cuff, but if he says it too, does that mean everyone's going to say it? <laughs> in Godasan's eyes, the family conference is an open stage on which to display his culinary skills. Maybe on this, maybe this invigorates him so much that he doesn't even get sleepy. Erica stood up, laughing at how youthful Goda was. Yeah, I remember back when I was addicted to stimulants too. <laughs> <laughs> this became a sign that it was time to disperse. <laughs> I'll clean up here. Please go and sleep, everyone. Leaving the cleanup to go to San, I went to the bathroom and then climbed the stairs to the second floor. What is with the music for this scene? It's very mournful. Oh, it's strange. Good night, Dr. Nanjo. Good night, Battler Son. Yeah. Good night. I haven't had a character yet. <laughs> I'm I so know. sorry. This is so str like it's just the worst possible. I'm mean, like it happens from time to time, right? Yeah. We like you have scenes where I have no characters, and I have scenes where you have no. <laughs> it, it 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 sucks more with me because I also do the narration, <laughs> yep. so it's very noticeable when it's only me talking into the <laughs> microphone for a while. Because then I have to ad lib with myself, which is very hard. <laughs> then in the second floor hallway, we split up. Doctor Nanjo went to his own room. Erica went to her room. And I returned to the cousin room. I, 
couldn't hear any sounds of playing coming from our room. Could they have fallen asleep already? No surprise at this time of night. If they were still playing, they would have been staying up way too late. When I opened the door quietly, as expected, the room was already pitch black except for a small nightlight. Everyone was already sleeping in their beds. I'm sure they all had a great time and played a ton. And then they probably talked about youthful things and enjoyed staying up late. If only I hadn't found the gold, I could have enjoyed my time with them. I'm already... tired. So tired. Forgetting even to change my clothes or brush my teeth, I crawled into bed and immediately began to descend into the marshes of sleep. Ah. Today's been so insane. I wonder if that old bastard is still in that family conference now. How does he not get tired? Come to think of it, what was it that old bastard said when we parted company? Tomorrow, there's something important I want to talk about as a family. It's about you. So again, Rudolph has seen something this time that makes him want to be open about Battler's parentage. Yep. We're, we're 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 hard assuming that's what ba that's what Rudolph has wanted to talk about to battle at this time and the last time it's come up. Yeah, I, I think it's a safe assumption. We could be wrong, but that like we're hard assuming that. I'm sure it's more stuff about being the successor. I don't even want to hear about it. If I tell you about this, I'll probably be killed. Now that's interesting. What in the absolute fuck? Because last time so we were already wondering, like, why is it that? As he thinks he's going to be killed, he wants so, to say so, this. So, 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 I have a potential, like, vector that we might ex explore on this. Okay, okay. Hit me. If Battler Vectorize is indeed me. Curious Child, right? Let's do some linear algebra. Okay. That means he's also a Sumadera. Hmm. And we've seen the Sumadera's proclivity for violence. Yes. That means the Sumaderas then have like a way in to kind of like claim that, oh yeah, they're the the like a child of theirs is also the heir. Like Kyria has renounced their family entirely too, but could they be could the Sumaderas be putting pressure on Rudolph as well? Maybe. I gotta wonder about that. Is Kyrie forcing her way into his life like entirely like something he's cool with, or hmm. We've always just assumed that Rudolph kind of took it in stride because he's a fucking, like, he fucks around too much, right? Yep. But maybe Kyria being in his life is not something he's totally cool with. That could be. I'm, I'm just speculating now, but that that's like, I, that's the first thing that comes to mind is why he would say this about that. I can't think of any other reason not to do with Kyrie that his coming clean about Battler's parentage would cause him to be killed. Yep. And specifically, I think it's specifically Kyrie's connection. Well, or does he think Kyrie will kill him? I mean, it depends. It depends on when he thinks he'll be killed here. If it's something that he thinks will immediately result in his death, then it's probably then Kyrie. Then it's probably Kyrie. And we saw that in chapter one, at least, he thought he would die immediately. Right. So if it's the same thing going on here as then. So maybe there's something more to, to Kyria and Rudolph's relationship. Maybe. And maybe she is putting some pressure on him. I don't we know. We have said Kyria is sus for a while. We have. And that she's had other machinations. Go like, she definitely seems to be... It could be that she does indeed have Rudolph by the balls, as it were. Interesting. I'll kill you whenever you want, you old bastard. And then what was it he said next? It's about your birth. My birth? Okay, so we, we now have that confirmed for sure. Okay, yeah. So, that, that, so like, we were right. It, it, yeah, that, that's what it is. Okay. I mean, it, it wasn't hard to guess once we knew about that particular fact, but it's, it's good to have confirmation, right? Probably just something about the noble Lucia lineage. Not interested. Just let me sleep. Man, they're really playing up how sleepy Battler is here. Did they put something in the tea? Or oh, there was the end of the chapter. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say right. I didn't think that I heard the thing go. There, last I swear time. to God, there was the glass breaking sound and the clock moving. 
but not the but not the vignetting and all that stuff. Anyway, thanks for coming out to episode three. We'll see you on Monday. <laughs> the sound of crashing waves. The sound of the tide surging. The noise of the sea breeze. It's going to be Natsuhi then, isn't it? Whenever my headache torments me, these are the sounds that fill my head. Hmm. Interesting. Unable to bear a successor, I was in a very difficult position with regards to the Ushiromia family. Whenever I heard of a drug or incense that could make you achieve pregnancy, I tried it. I even tried, uh, what was it? Eating more, <laughs> eating more raw meat? <laughs> how, 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 was, how did that work? <laughs> Eat more raw meat for a healthy son. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember that. But nothing had any effect. Until I was blessed with Jessica 18 years ago. I was ashamed to even call myself a wife. Children are created by the efforts of two people and the whims of heaven. It's not fair to place all the blame on yourself. All right, I'm Natsuhi. I forgot. <laughs> we're we're on to a scene that's all me. Yay! Yay! <clears throat> I still don't know what caused my inability to become pregnant. I even went to see noted physicians. I underwent humiliating examinations. But I was always just told that they didn't understand the reason. They didn't bother to examine Krauss to see whether he was shooting blanks, come to think of it. <laughs> oh my I God. wonder if that's a systemic issue in women's health care. <laughs> yeah, you know what? What if what if it was <laughs> what if it was Kraus? Jesus. Alright. Even though quite some time had passed since your marriage, you still couldn't bear a child. I see. It's only natural that Ava, who secretly aspired to become the successor, would start getting ideas. Why Ava? Oh, right, this bit. Ava tried to convince Father that I was a failure as the successor's wife. It was a time when Kenzo was also very disappointed by my husband's repeated business failures. On the other hand, Ava's husband Hideyoshi's business was growing well, completely the opposite of my husband's. He was the only person who could bring Father good news. So perhaps father couldn't be blamed if he decided to lend an ear to Ava's words. Oh, also the implication that Rudolph's businesses weren't going well then. <laughs> Same with Rosa. I mean, or we kind of figure that none of them are that great at this. True. Yeah, which is funny. It's really funny, actually, that all of them kind of suck at it. <laughs> <laughs> or even accept them completely. It was all my fault because I couldn't bear a child. You are sinless. Well, let's not go too far now. <laughs> Aren't babies of this country carried here by storks? If anyone is to be judged, blame the stork. Oh, God. What's really funny <laughs> is that that sounds exactly like a Beato that was raised in captivity until age 15. Yeah. Doesn't it? Yep. Oh, my God. I don't <laughs> know why Natsuhi's mind Beato would be thinking that way, but eh. <laughs> Thank you. However, even though he was still in good health then, the head was already well past his prime. And it's not hard to imagine that he wanted to see his grandchildren's faces as soon as possible. Are they in Kinzo's study now? That's what the background suggests. Seems like it. Mm. Who cares? If he wanted a grandchild, he could have just done what he wanted with that appalling amount of money he had. Appalling amount of money, huh? Yeah. This is Kinzo, the man who always bragged about how money could create anything. If he wanted a grandchild, why couldn't he just manage something with that money he was so proud of? <sighs> yes, that's right. The head gave up on me when I couldn't bear a child and did just that. Oh? The head gave to many charities, thinking it the duty of anyone in possession of so much money. Okay, not... I, I'll soft agree on that. Sure. Yeah, if you've got a ton of money, yeah, you you should be giving a lot of it away to charity. Okay. Yeah. B broad strokes. I'm with you. What among these, an orphanage known as the Fukuin House, had been given especially large donations, possibly because he had old ties with that place. Interesting. So Kinzo's ties to the Fukuin House go back before his financial involvement with it. Okay. 
Ah, the Fukuin house. Furniture came from that place quite often. Why would Natsuhi be familiar with the term furniture? Why indeed? Well, I said all the all the serpents say it. All the servants say it, but say why? It. Okay, and I guess that would make sense that she'd then project that onto her Beato, but still. Who's talking here? I believe this is Natsuhi. To provide on-the-job training and preparation for life as a working adult, the head employed Fuku and house children with exceptional grades as servants. All these servants in the mansion with on in their names such as Shannon, Cannon, Lunon, Manon, and Leon, came from there. We have five names. We have five names. Okay, this is interesting. Lunon we knew about. Manon and Leon, I f we've not heard. I feel like we saw Manon once in passing, maybe, but uh -huh. we definitely have not seen Leon. I've never seen and that. And this seems to hard disconfirm my theory that Lunon does refer, is a name for Kumasawa. Yeah, that would that would seem to well, I guess it doesn't, but it'd be weird. It'd be it'd be strange. It's not a hard deconfirmation, but it seems less likely now. Mm. There were quite a lot of them, weren't there? Were? <clears throat> Though most quit after just a few years. That's probably because a few years of work of wages from working here would earn them more than enough to live on their own. Experience as a servant for the Ucharomia family would be a wonderful thing to add to their resume. Uh, actually, it's resume. <laughs> she, she didn't add the, uh, the accent, so it's just resume. <laughs> I'm sure it was the head's ambition that they would gain this for themselves and then spread their wings in society. And that's why he tattooed this golden wing on, Jesse, <laughs> on Shannon's thigh. <laughs> I see. <gasps> So, an adopted child. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Jessica's adopted? Or is this other person who was calling was adopted? Were, did she adopt them and, and then, then abandon them? Abandon them after she had a child of her own. Hmm. I can see it. I can see it. Okay. Father. What did you just say? Except this baby is my grandchild. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Apparently, the baby that Kumasawa was trying to soothe didn't like the study air at all. It kept on crying, upset. My apologies, father. What is it you just... Accept this baby as my grandchild and raise it to be the one who succeeds Kraus. In other words, you want me to raise this baby as me and my husband's own child? Kenzo, where'd you get the baby, Kenzo? Where'd you get the baby, Kenzo? I... Where'd, you get, the, where'd you get the baby, huh? Does it matter? They're free. I... <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it, it's not like it matters what brand it is. If you see someone stealing a baby, no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh! Oh, I just... Hashtag demonetize. <laughs> All right. That's right. It's clear now that you cannot bear children. There must be some sort of defect in your body. What about Crow shooting blanks? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, there. Oh, there, there. <laughs> yes, that, that's what I was referring to. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, that checks out. <laughs> Sorry, I'm doing such a poor Natsuhi. <laughs> I'm trying. I just wanted to play in the space, okay? Yeah, valid. Although she couldn't hear our discussion in the slightest, Kumasawa kept on trying to cuddle the baby. This made it cry even louder. What nonsense. If all responsibility of giving birth to children rested with the woman, there'd be no need for men in this world. Burn. I've never forgotten the bitter pain I felt that day. It's not as though I didn't want a child. However, no matter how much I prayed, I couldn't get pregnant. 
thinking that something to do with my body might be the cause, I went to see several famous doctors, but even so, no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't become pregnant. <laughs> and in the end, this was the result. I see. So she doesn't want Jessica involved. So this then must be the child before Jessica then. Probably. Yeah, because Jessica is younger than this purported other person. And if she had already had Jessica at this point, they wouldn't be approaching her being like, hey, here's a child. Mm -hmm. The baby had been picked up by the Fukuin house just recently. Of course you couldn't. <laughs> of course you couldn't help but feel compassion for this child who was so young and who had already lost its parents' affection. However, it brought me nothing but pain and sadness. It would have been another story if I had suffered to bear with this child, but why should I be forced to hold this baby who not only shared none of my blood, but who was not treated related to my husband in the slightest either? I don't hate father. If anything, I hated my own body. Well, there's a lot to unpack there. I detested it. I truly detested my own body for being unable to bear a child. So... I prayed. I prayed to both angels and demons. And my wishes were granted by both. For That's a raw line, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I almost wish I hadn't gone for the meme. No, 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 no. It, we, I, think you, I think you nailed it. <laughs> 10 out of 10. For what did you pray to angels? <clears throat> angels. I prayed for a miracle in my body. If there was something wrong with my body, I could accept that. In that case, I wanted to overcome the defect and somehow be granted the miracle of being given my husband's child. <laughs> that wish was granted. Oh my god, my bow was radioactive. <laughs> <laughs> the next year, you gave birth to Jessica. And for what did you pray to demons? I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand it. I hated my body, so... I hated this baby because it made my failure so apparent. Hmm. Then what did you wish for? For the first time, I prayed and made wishes to demons. I wished that this baby would just disappear. Of course that wish was also granted. By demons. On that day, I left the baby with an older servant and went to think about the nature of the f about the future in the Rose Garden. No, that's a lie. I didn't want to think about anything. The baby's cries were annoying. So I ordered the servant to take the baby to a place where I couldn't hear. By a place where I couldn't hear, I meant somewhere far away. Yes, I wished for it. I wished for the servant to take the baby far away and never return. I see... So a passing demon heard your wish, Natsuhi-sama. And then, what happened next? After that, there was a bizarre accident that could only have been granted me by a demon. The woodland path from the Rose Garden to the harbor is probably well suited for a comfortable walk. It must surely feel good to occasionally leave the path and walk through a grove of trees, depending on your mood. However, wouldn't that path be fairly hard to travel on when taking a walk with a baby in your arms? There was a cliff on the other side. Oh, this cliff! Hmm. I don't know if I don't know if we're meant to uh, be. It's also this cliff, but it's the same background image. <laughs> it was about ten meters tall, I think. It was rocky below. Oh, I haven't seen Rocky Below yet. I just saw Rocky Balboa. <laughs> there was also a fence there. Does it seem at all likely that the servant went to the trouble of walking there holding a baby and then leaned against the fence? The only conceivable explanation is that she was lured there by the beckoning of a demon. Really? It sounds like you told her to go dump the baby and then tried to wash your hands of it. <laughs> she was lured there, wasn't she? <laughs> By a demon who heard your wish. And then the servant and the baby. The baby. They died. They fell from the cliff down to the rocks below. 
Okay. Um, the servant too? Huh. Hmm. That doesn't seem right. No, they died because I wished it. That means this is... Magic cannot happen unless you are willing to make it happen. Hmm. I think Nazi he fucking murdered these two. Damn. Could be. It isn't your fault. And that's exactly what Beato would say if it was her fault. There's no need to think about it any further. <laughs> Just calmly. I can give you like a red truth if you. that helps. What in Ta Nation is a red truth? <laughs> 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 it's it's what I'm calling the latest strain from my new canna business. <laughs> Do people actually say canna business? <laughs> really some... uncool people. Oh, that's unfortunate. I hate that. Okay. But it happened because I wished it. No, that's wrong. Even if you wish for something, whether it comes true or not is decided by the whims of gods, demons, and witches. Nope. Magic can only happen if you are willing to make it happen. You are sinless. Not so he absolutely fucking murdered these, or tried to. Humans seems. are sinless. You can even say that I killed them. No, I did kill them. Oh, honey. Honey. I saw your mourning and felt pity, so I lured the servant with the baby to the cliff and guided them down it. Mm, wasn't it just an unfortunate accident? If you can't accept it as an accident, blame it on us. <laughs> That's why demons exist. <laughs> That's right! We're here for your sake! <laughs> it's not like you killed them! We killed them! So you are sinless! So please, don't blame yourself, Natsuhi. But is, what did the summon stake say explicitly to answer? Oh, is God. that true? Oh, God. Am I truly sinless? Yeah, you are. <laughs> Young one who claims revenge for the events of 19 years ago? If you're going to curse someone, curse me. However, witches have a patent on curses. Let me take on this fight you're trying to pick with Natsuhi. Interesting. I am the Usharomia family alchemist, Beatrice the Golden. If anyone picks a fight with the master I serve, I will fight in my master's stead. The master is Natsuhi. The master Beatrice serves is Natsuhi. Yeah, now. Revenge for 19 years ago, you say? I'll show you that such is hardly a blink of an eye for a witch who's lived a thousand years. <laughs> is, is this still Beatrice, do you think? I think so, yeah. So, you hate Natsuhi for wishing your death 19 years ago? Let me make you remember just who it was that lured you off that cliff. As, as the... Oh. As the middle-aged female servant cuddled the sobbing baby... Middle-aged female servant. Hmm. She walked on a small path through the trees. Natsuhi had told her that the baby was too loud, so she had tried to get as far from the rose garden as she could. She was completely unaware as to why she'd gone out of her way to head in this direction. However, the sobbing baby suddenly stopped crying. Something was reflected in its eyes, but the servant couldn't tell what. However, thinking that the baby had stopped because it had taken an interest in something, she headed in the direction of the baby's gaze. baby had seen a cloud of gold butterflies disappearing off into the trees. And on the other side of the trees, the servant could see a woman. Who? She didn't recognize this person, but it didn't look like anyone who was supposed to be there. Wait. Okay. The baby stopped crying and stared in that direction. And then the servant's legs started to automatically carry her that way. Come this way, woman. Bring that cursed baby with you. Ah. The woman couldn't disobey. She was completely overwhelmed by Beato's gold glowing eyes. She walked lightly as though through a dream world. 
At some point, the scenery surrounding her had changed, but she did not notice. She could not notice. Though this should have been Rokunjima, at some point it became the garden of a mansion she had never seen before. Okay. It was a garden she had never set eyes on. Even grander than the great rose garden of the Usharomia family, a garden of gold roses. There stood an arbor, and a woman wearing an elegant dress beckoning to her. There was a man who looked like a butler, and the tea he poured with a graceful gesture had a very nice and enticing smell. It was as though they were telling her to join their tea party. She couldn't disobey. She had to go to the master of this golden rose garden and give this child as an offering. Forgive me, woman. Curse your bad luck for being entranced by a witch. And surrounded by these gold roses, which you would never be able to enjoy in this world. Sleep. Ga the gap. <laughs> yeah, understood. When the gap snapped her fingers, a pitch black hole opened at the woman's feet, and she was swallowed up along with the baby. The scene of the moment that followed must have burned itself into the eyes of the woman and the baby. The two floated in the air and looked down at the gold rose garden spread out below them. Below their feet was not earth, but a golden rose garden that stretched as far as the eye could see, without any gaps. If one could have this scene imprinted in their minds as their last memory, that would be such a merciful way to die. Then the woman and the baby were swallowed up by the golden sea. The thunk was remarkably plain and remarkably quiet for a sound that stole away two lives. However, it made a per for a perfectly suitable show at a tea party of witches. With the woman and the baby at the center, the rose garden was slowly swallowed up by darkness. The sound of the wind grew stronger bit by bit. That TV static? What is that noise? It was the roar of the sea. The two who had fallen into the thicket of golden roses from that great height and died were gradually wrapped up in the roar of the sea, wrapped up in the scenery of the beach below the cliff. I guarantee it. You are completely sinless. So that's why it's the roar of the sea. Yep. Yep. I'll accept this revenge from 19 years ago. <laughs> ah, ah. When I spotted the two of them on the rocks below, I went pale. Then I dashed back to the mansion and there was a huge uproar. They took them to a hospital in a boat as soon as possible. From that height, it was a miracle that they had even avoided an instant death. Both the servant and the baby died. In less than three days from the time father had entrusted me with the baby, I had killed it. My husband had been on a business trip. Rosasan, who still lived on the island at the time, had been traveling with her friends. Because Rosa was still pretty young. <laughs> right? 19 years ago, Rosa is like... A teenager. Yeah? Yet, father and I were the only ones on Rokunjima. And before anyone except father and I really knew anything... A baby had appeared out of nowhere and then disappeared again. That's right, it was a dream. A nightmare. I was sure that father would blame me. However, he seemed somehow strange. <laughs> I saw this coming. I knew this would happen. How long will you struggle? How long will it be before you're mine? <laughs> I have no interest in an empty cage. Throw it away. What does, does that, that child or and or servant have to do with Beatrice? Does that kind of like <clears throat> that would play into our theory that Kinzo was trying to raise vessels for Beatrice? Maybe so. And then he was trying to get one raised here. Why would he want such a child to be the successor? Because I don't know why he would want the child to be the successor. Uh, he's clearly not well. Um... That's a good question, though. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it lines up 
with his, it with his unreasoning, unreasonable lines of thought. But it definitely seems like he's ready to go back and try and like he's the loss of a child is no big burden to him. Yeah. Which I'm I'm feeling more and more like maybe our baby mill theory is closer than we suspected it was. Here's something. Yeah. Let's let's uh, let's think of it in terms of battler style of reasoning from last episode. Go for it. So on the one hand, having a baby, this particular baby, <clears throat> be the successor, was important enough for him to intervene, go fetch a baby, and set all this up. Right. And yet losing that baby didn't matter to him at all. Is but it if m- between lo- having the baby and losing it, losing it doesn't matter at all. How much could having it there matter? And if that's so, mustn't it be that there's some Was losing it just motive? a message to Natsuhi? Was all this just like a way to intimidate her? I have no use for an empty cage. Is it intimidate her? Hmm. Don't know, but I like your I like your style of reasoning here. When father learned of the accidental death, he kept on laughing and laughing as though there could be no greater pleasure. Enough that just listening to it gave me a creepy feeling. Perhaps something had come loose in his mind. From that day onwards, father shut himself up inside the world of the occult even more than he ever had before. When my husband came back, he was surprised to see that father was even more bizarre than he had been before. However, he had already accepted that this would happen sooner or later. Of course, my husband had heard about the baby. However, he told me that it was surely just some whim of father's and to forget it. So I forgot it. It was an unfortunate accident. No, there wasn't an accident at all. I forgot everything, even that the baby had existed in the first place. After all, it was a twisted nightmare that lasted not even three days. That's right, it was all a nightmare. I don't want to remember. The cliff, the broken face, the roar of the sea, and the cry of the baby. (laughs) So this baby is the baby from 19 years ago? Of course not. I killed that baby. It no longer exists in this world. However, there is no red truth in the human world. No, nothing can be trusted there. (laughs) That's right. Banto definitely killed that baby. <laughs> However, you might find out that it's alive in the world of humans. Whether it's really alive or not, right? Do you mean to say that it actually survived after falling to the rocks from that height? I don't know, but calm down. No matter how much this person hates you, it was an accident, and that's the truth. If he does hate you, his hatred is completely unjustified. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. They were a literal baby at the time, right? Yeah. There's no way they would have any remaining memory of this event. Absolutely not. Yeah. It would have had to been told to them by someone who knew enough about what was going on. Who do we know was on the island at the time of this happening? Natsuhi, who wouldn't want this to get out. Kinzo, who shut himself up in his room and probably wouldn't communicate with anyone anyway, and Kumasawa. Was Kumasawa there? Kumasawa was the one holding the baby, remember, mm, and, and she swaddling was. them when Kinzo handed it to her. This also, I think, something to think about with Beatrice's specific wording. Or, or, I can't remember if it was Beatrice or the guy. Can we go like back in the history like a little bit? A little bit more? There we go. You may find out that it's alive in the world of humans, whether it's really alive or not. So it seems to me that here, we're talking about alive in the sense that Kinzo's alive. Mm -hmm. Kinzo can be alive in the world of humans, despite being dead, because they contrived a way to gaslight everyone into it. Shit. Yeah, okay, keep going. I'm thinking that this is cueing us in to that sort of situation, that it absolutely doesn't have to be the same baby just anyone could make a call and say these things we've already established someone would have had to get the story and pass it along to someone whether it's the baby or not doesn't really matter yet we know that someone was told this story Mm -hmm. and had to and had to call in and told them that story or it's probably kumasawa it's probably kumasawa 
Okay. Whew. We're making progress, I yeah. think. I, I feel good. I feel good. I feel good. But, but even if I didn't lay a finger on him, inside my heart, I... Uh, just gotta check this real quick. Cool. Calm down. No matter who the man from 19 years ago hates or what he yells at you, there's no way the sin he's after actually occurred. So calm down. Why don't I welcome the man from 19 years ago as my guest? <laughs> Just when the riddle was solved and I thought my job was finished, I've got to entertain this final guest of mine. <laughs> man, Natsuhi's Beato is fucking manic. Now. Yeah. Not until now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not until now. But, but it, now. It's very, it's it like, it's very uncomfortable. Like, this is the first time this Beato is mocking Kinzo is manic, is threatening, is pulling the witch faces. Every previous time, this Natsuhi's Beato was very agreeable. Yep, and very, like, a, a kind and calming presence. Yeah. And that, jeez. Natsuhi is not doing well right now. No. Do you not, think she's about to do some murders? Uh, Except probably not. Erica seemed to suggest that, Erica seemed to have already pinned her for the murders. Yeah, but also we know someone's deliberately trying to frame her. We think. We think. We have only her word for what went on in that but we do know there was a call and so on. I guess, yeah, because Genji Krauss would have no reason to back that up unless it happened. It begins to grow more interesting. <laughs> Not only are you protecting Lord Goldsmith's secret, but you also have a 19th guest, as well as a man from 19 years ago. <laughs> True, since we need to claim that Kinza's alive, Erica's the 19th person, huh? <laughs> and besides that 19th person, we also have a man from 19 years ago? How interesting. I'm getting all fired up. We have no lack of opponents. And I was just lamenting the fact that I had but one guest at my tea party. Come, you fools. <laughs> Berudo Erica is Lady Burncastle's piece. In that case, who, whose piece is the man from 19 years ago? Hmm. The voice faintly seeping from the other end of the line was Natsuhi's. I understand. I'll go to sleep right now. I won't leave my room and I won't pick up the phone. So don't involve my husband and daughter. Even this begging scream, which should shake the heart of any listener, could be listened to with a cold ruthlessness through the end of the receiver. As long as you follow my orders, I'll keep your secret, mother. Do not disobey me. I am already very close by to you. I can easily tell whether you have turned your lights off or whether you are on the phone. If I wish to, I could even kiss your sleeping face. I'll keep it. I'll keep my promise. So stop it. Just stop it. Stop it. The receiver was slammed down. He knew very well that the way you hang up a phone can leave a nasty aftertaste for the other side. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Good night, mother. And there you have it. Now not so he won't come out of her room tonight. <sighs> That's pretty handy. You can change your voice, huh? <laughs> Anyone can change their voice. A sweet voice when coaxing Papa. A sick sounding voice when taking the day off school. An apologetic voice when turning down a friend that you actually hate. If you want, I can do any kind of voice at all. Got it? Changing your voices. I don't... I don't buy that for a moment. <laughs> I don't think that's possible. You should stop being a witch and become a voice actress. <laughs> so, are all the pieces set up on both sides now? Furudo Erika, what a wonderful piece. She's a much more suitable piece for you than Angie was, Burn. <laughs> Your praise honors me, Lady Lambda Delta. Two Bernies, maybe more. <laughs> <laughs> the pleasure is mine. She really is wonderful. Truly cute. I'd like to make her surrender to the illusion of the witch and see her face twist in humiliation. <sighs> Do you hear that? Don't embarrass me, okay? Prove yourself to be a much more useful piece than Angie was. Yeah, leave it to me. Lady Burncastle, my master. 
I'm nothing like that gloomy, dull-witted, totally uncute piece. <laughs> She's right. That Angie didn't do anything useful except get turned into meat chunks to egg battler on. Would you both please stop talking about my sister? No. Jesus Christ. I have absolutely no interest in family love or sibling love. The game we want to see is more gruesome and sticky. A grotesque, pop, and cute murder case. <sighs> if Natsu he is the king, then... I wonder if that makes Beato the queen. <laughs> the pack of witches and furniture guarding Natsu he is less like a set of chess pieces and more like... <laughs> Bowling pins, right? <laughs> Natsu he and Beato, Kinzo, and illusions of the worthless furniture. Entertain us a bit, will ya? Especially you, Beato. We're already bored of you. This Legend of the Witch Murders game of yours is over already. Your time is over and done with. This game board already belongs to Burn and me. It'll suit you to be reduced to one of our pieces and toyed with for all eternity. <laughs> Both Natsuhi and Beato are like the guts of a filthy truth wrapped up in a bit of thin skin. Tearing that to bits and dragging the insides out is one of my... No, one of our few pleasures. <laughs> yep. You can have tons of fun with it. Hey, are you watching, Beatrice? Look at how much fun can be had playing you with your game board. Let me show you. This fifth game's going to be really fun. <sighs> it's a bit sad if we're the only ones having a pleasant chat. Why don't you let Beato talk too? Hear that? I'll give you special permission to talk. What do you hope to gain from this latest game? <laughs> she said nothing. That's right, that's right. You're the loser who surrendered to Battler. Leave it to me, Kay. I'll put the witch side on top right away. But that means I'll have to sacrifice your peace. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh my god. <laughs> the epitaph has been easily solved before the first twilight, and Beatrice, the keeper of the gold, has lost face. <laughs> Isn't it great that you remain as a piece as part of Natsuhi's illusion? Well, we're treating you as a pin now instead of a piece. Is that okay? The golden witch Beatrice is out of the picture now. You and your furniture have only a minuscule role. Minuscule. I never learned how to pronounce that word. Minuscule? Minuscule role in my game. A loser's role. Resign yourself to getting blasted away and becoming Burns and my toy. If you don't like that, why well, not just tell us to stop? If you do, we'll stop. Hmm. <laughs> She's saying she doesn't mind. <laughs> You're totally a pin. <laughs> <laughs> There's no need for a golden witch anymore. All that's needed is a sacrificial doll, so the two witches can enjoy some time playing. Die. Die. Disappear. Confess to your filthy past and your crimes. Speak out your sob story of regret and repentance as you throw yourself off a cliff and die. That's a very pointed reference. Yeah. The Golden Witch will never again have her turn. <laughs> hmm. Beato. <sighs> this will probably turn out to be a nasty game. On the surface, it looks very similar to the usual tales. However, there's... No respect given to the true main character of this story. This tale was supposed to be one that Golden Witch Beatrice invited Dusharomi a battler to see. We finally admit it. Chapter 5, we finally get there and admit that Beato is the main character. Yep. Fucking called it chapter 1. Yeah, you did. I mean, it's not. It, you had one of two options, so. <laughs> However, the host that has been lost. The host has been lost and there are no longer any guests. The one who did the inviting and the one who was invited are no longer around in this horrible tale. Welcome to the fifth game. End of the Golden Witch. Welcome to the banquet without the guest of honor. 
hijacked by the evil witches. Ready, battler? The second day is finally about to start. <laughs> Just like Beato, I hate slow story progression. Just do what you want. No matter how much you mess things up, I'll definitely reach the truth of this game. <laughs> it has to be that way after all. You gotta fight your little sister's sake as well. Ugh. Don't worry. Lady Lambda Delta is a far more terrifying opponent than that fool Beatrice. But I'll be giving you plenty of support, so there won't be any problems. Together with me, why don't you finally expose the illusion of the witch this time? I don't give a damn about you. I won't acknowledge anything that didn't exist in Beato's games, so I don't need you. Is now really the time to act tough? Ah, oh well, let's both give it our all, okay? Together, let's tear this illusion of the witch apart. Nah! Nah! <laughs> Erica offered me her hand to shake. Instead of just passively ignoring this, I gave her a proactive and clear answer by knocking her hand aside. <laughs> Looks like he hates shaking hands. Just like Angie. Don't worry. I'm a far more useful piece than Angie is. I'm nothing at all like shredded meat that couldn't do anything but restore your fighting spirit. <laughs> Isn't it great that you've been blessed with such a helpful looking ally? In the past, it was Virgilia and Ronave. Then Angie came as well. And now you have Burn and Erica. There are so many pieces supporting you. So, how does it feel knowing that you still can't catch on to the truth despite that? How does it feel? It doesn't matter. This battle is between me and Beato. Everyone else besides us doesn't matter. Oh, is that true? Are you finally standing on your own? You've always had someone helping you, someone sympathetic to you. So I wonder just how far you'll get on your own. Entertain me. I'll grab it, and I'll take it back. This is our game. You two aren't wanted here! <laughs> yeah, that's true. This is your game, isn't it? So try taking it back. Let's see how far someone like you, who couldn't even win Beato's games when she went easy on you all over the place, can get in Lambda's completely ruthless game without any help. Well then, wake up! Usharomia Battler, welcome to the morning of October 5th! Nice! What a great freaking game this is. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Dawn of the Second Day. No? Nothing? Alright. Sorry, just... my brain was rebooting. <laughs> Fair enough. Was it someone's alarm clock? Beep. Beep. An electronic tone repeatedly rang out through the room. Battler, who had gone to bed late and not managed to get enough sleep, covered his head in his blanket and waited for someone to turn off the alarm. But no matter how much time passed, the electronic tone didn't stop. I see. The point of the alarm clock isn't just to be loud enough to wake you, but to be annoying enough to keep you from wanting to fall back asleep. Hey, the alarm's going off. Make it stop, please. Do waking up voice voices always get this annoyed? <sighs> well, it does make sense. After all, people are still sleepy and in a bad mood. However, there was absolutely no sign that my annoyed voice had caused anyone to turn over in their sleep. Hmm or crawl out of bed to stop the alarm. Letting out a deep sigh, I stumbled to my feet. With the shutters down on the windows, there was almost no light getting in, and the room was as dim as it had been earlier. Though even without the shutters, there's no way this dull weather would let in enough sun to make this a pleasant morning. The cousins were still wrapped up in their beds, sound asleep, and taking no notice whatsoever of that beeping. Normally, once any person gets up, the others tend to automatically follow, Annoyed that this law of serial summer camp awakenings that I'd made up had been broken, I searched for the source of the sound. 
I could hear it coming from a wristwatch set on the table. Judging by the style of the watch, it was probably George Onikis. Anyway, when I randomly pushed a small button on the side of it, the sound stopped. Apparently, it had, it, it had been set for 7 in the morning. Is it already 7? <sighs> Sorry, but I really don't feel like I slept at all. Playing cards were left on the table as though they had stopped mid-game. The game had probably been 7s. Every time, it keeps feeling like maybe the, like, the people got knocked out. Not poisoned, but like put knockout drugs or something. And yet, why? I don't know. It just keeps looking like it. <sighs> Damn it, I've got this piercing headache. What the hell happened last night? That mountain of gold and the subsequent argument between the relatives? I feel like a bad dream. <laughs> so stupid. Breakfast normally came at 8 o'clock. Now wasn't a bad time to start getting up and getting dressed. Even those adults probably won't argue in front of the cousins. <clears throat> in that case, I'll stay with my cousins all day long. I'm sure they'll be able to separate me from all this annoying talk about the gold and being the successor and all. In fact, I should have done this from the beginning. I felt disgusting having slept with my clothes on last night, which caused me to get all sweaty. I guess I'll take a shower. I'm sure the others want to as well. At this age, it's embarrassing to wake them by shaking their shoulders. If I turn the TV on, everyone will probably wake up. Well, let's at least turn on the lights for now. In this dim light with the quiet sound of the never-ending wind and rain, it really doesn't feel like morning has come yet. I flipped the light switch. And then that dimly lit morning ended. Were the cousins all dead? Oh! Oh! What the fuck? <clears throat> George! George! This is just too horrible. How could anyone get away with something like this? As they clung to Anaki's corpse, which would never wake up again, Aunt Eva and Uncle Hideyoshi cried. That's enough. Do you think George couldn't be like the two of you to share him this way? Of course not. Aniki, I know how you feel, but let's have Dr. Nanjo handle this. You don't understand. George was killed. George. Ah, George. Dr. Nanjo's right. We mustn't keep staring at George in such a state. This is for George's sake. We have to restrain ourselves for now. When Aunt Eva tried to even harder to cling to that corpse, Dad and Uncle Hideyoshi dragged her away and headed toward the... Headed and had a heated debate with her beside the wall. Oh no, George! <gasps> Dr. Nanjo, help him! If he's lost too much blood, do a blood transfusion. George and I are the same blood type. I, I beg you, Dr. Nanjo! <laughs> it pains me to say this, but your blood can't do George Kuhn any good now. Dr. Nanjo shook his head slightly, then nodded across to where I stood, giving me a signal. I softly pulled the blanket up, covering George Onaki's corpse. His neck was split wide open. It was probably larger and deeper than his mouth. Would covering that part up make the corpse look neat and clean? Of course not. The large amount of lost blood stained the bed a horrible red and black, and even covering him with the blanket couldn't hide the traces. After all, even the blanket had large bl red-black stains and covering him with it made his corpse look even more gruesome. So I stripped the blanket off my bed and placed it on top of the first one. But there were only two extra blankets. So if we covered one more of the corpses, we wouldn't be able to cover any more. I feel bad about the ones we can't cover, but for some reason, times like these make me feel like muttering don't complain about it being unfair inside my head. Curious. Put blankets over all of them. Wouldn't want them to catch cold. Sure, of course. Curious on and I started covering the other corpses up to their heads with their blankets, just like George Onikis, so that they wouldn't have to undergo any more shame with their terrible wounds exposed like this. In one bed rested Jessica. Jessica was exactly the same as George Onikis. Though she appeared to be resting quietly in the bed, her neck had been sliced deep and the wound lay open in a brutal way. Mario was the same. And not only Maria, there was one more victim. Lying on the same bed, as though they'd been sleeping alongside each other, 
was Aunt Rosa. All right, so who could have done... I guess it seems like they were dead before Battler came in. Maybe, maybe we not. We can't say that for certain. Yeah. But it really does seem like that. I feel like if I wandered into a room and it was full of six corpses that had been slashed up and blood was everywhere, even if it was dark, I'd probably notice. Pitch black in the middle of the night, you're trying not to wake anyone? Yeah, there's there's blood everywhere. Hmm. Probably smells horrible. Hmm. All right. Either way, the fact that Battler didn't wake up during it. that You're right. That's equally improbable. Yeah. I mean, unless they were knocked out. We keep getting weird bits and pe- like hints about this, and I don't know how to bring it into things. <sighs> George Onicky, Jessica, Maria, and Aunt Rosa. In this room were four humans who had been killed, their necks sliced open. They'd probably been like that since last night. I'd returned without noticing anything, gotten in bed, and fallen asleep. All of them had horizontal cut across their throats. I'd been forced to see all the way into the depths of those gashes in everyone's throats. At worst, the wounds might have been deep enough to stretch halfway through their necks. If you tried to open it up, you'd probably be able to see the gash that reached all the way to the bone. The only wounds were the single gashes on each neck. So if you just covered their necks with your hand, you might be able to persuade yourself that they were merely sleeping. But even so, this frighteningly deep wound was incredibly gruesome. There's no such thing as clean or dirty ways of killing. All methods of killing are equally brutal. But even so, the brutality here was just horrible. And there was one more thing that adorned these brutal murders, making them even more unsettling. Drawn very large on the wall was something like an eerie magic circle. It was drawn in a bright red paint that looked like blood and made it look as though some creepy ceremony had taken place in this room. The four of them offered as human sacrifices. However, that wasn't what we were concerned about. No one has a heart so cold that they could witness the deaths of those close to them and still worry about some scribbles on the wall. Four corpses. Yep, only four. Where are the other two? Good morning, everyone. Oh, what a wonderful magic circle that is. (laughs) (laughs) Do you think they drew that freehand or did they have like a stencil? (laughs) (laughs) The girl who bragged that she drew more pleasure from the process of exposing the truth than the truth itself, and who went so far as to call herself an intellectual rapist, appeared in the hall. When she saw the extraordinarily creepy magic circle in this gruesome room, I heard what was unmistakably a sigh of admiration escape her lips. You... don't come in here. I just heard about it in the corridor. It's four people who have passed away, correct? Allow me to express my sincere regrets. On Erica's face, no. No, that's not it. It was in her eyes. In Erica's eyes, I could see an indiscreet smile that was hard to describe. She found this interesting. She found the outbreak of crime interesting. It was like the smile of a kid off to the side of the stage just before her turn to appear in a school play. (sighs) Sorry, Erica-chan. We're busy at the moment. Could you wait in your room, please? Well, we can't have that. It's the detective's right to investigate the scene. We're saying that we have no business with you. Now is not the- now is the time for outsiders like you to stand back. Yeah, in my personal opinion, only third-rate mysteries have a suspect who tries to interfere with the investigation and then turns out to be the culprit. Who gives a damn about what you want? Get out. You aren't wanted here. Erica Chan, I'm really sorry, but could you go back to your room? We are busy right now. George, George. Ah. Stand back. I can't investigate the scene like this. 
If it is necessary, we'll do it ourselves. The police will do it. Like hell, you have the right to bring more shame to everyone's remains than they've already endured. Huh. Detective's authority, bitch. The detective has the right to inspect all crime scenes. Stand back, Usharomia battler. This is an official privilege of this game, which the human side has accepted. Those words, which seemed to be utterly ridiculous at first, were words of power that had come from a world on a much higher plane than the one they were in. Battler was thrown back by an unseen power and landed on his butt. What in the absolute fuck? Yeah, the, what in the absolute fuck? Struck silent by this quiet intensity, nobody was able to prevent Erica from entering the room, suffocated by this bizarre atmosphere. It's the first time we've had the red text used in real life. Yeah. Yeah, or well, like on the game board, I guess, is the real. Yeah. <sighs> Don't worry. My goal is not to profane the dignity of the deceased. It's not like I want to peek into something as disgusting as a slit throat as a slit through someone's neck. I want to know something completely different. In other words, I want to know who committed these murders. I'll ask Dr. Nanjo and everyone else too. In particular, the first one to discover them, Battler San. There are many things I want to question you about, so I request your cooperation. <sighs> Like I said, but, but by what authority are you doing this? That's because I am the detective. Battler couldn't argue against this incomprehensible nonsense. No, no, he wasn't permitted to argue. It was a restriction placed on pieces. Erica summoned Dr. Nanjo and heard the details of his preliminary examination of the corpses. Normally, he wouldn't have spoken of that to an outsider so casually. However, for some reason, the atmosphere about the place had become one in which hiding things from Erica was forbidden. Hmm. I like how this fifth game board has become like a mockery, almost. Yeah. Like, there's, there's only like lip service paid to any narrative cohesion. It really is just a game. Mm. This is mystery without the story. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which seems very emblematic of how Lambda Delta runs her games. Okay, so let's enjoy this first Twilight of Lambda Deltas. Alright. Four corpses? That's two corpses short, though. Well, she doesn't necessarily have to be six people killed, but that's how we've been playing, at least, so. That girl is complete, isn't completely clueless, so. She must have killed two more people somewhere else. On the wall was the magic circle representing the first twilight, similar to the ones in Beato's games. <laughs> that girl talks tough, but I wonder just how closely she'll be able to imitate Beato. <laughs> that Hebrew sure is crappy. It isn't written exactly right either. What? What the heck? What the fuck am I doing here? What the fuck is going on? Can someone please explain to me what the fuck is actually happening in this <laughs> fucking game? Why is there a magic circle? I bet they wanted to copy Beatrice Sama. <laughs> what a crappy magic circle. This isn't just a copycat. Some human went out of their way to draw that so they could make it look like Beatrice Sama did this. Anyway, let's report to Beatrice-sama about this. Even though we're already up to our eyeballs to protect Goldsmith's secret. What a pain. But these murders have no beauty in them at all. It isn't really a closed room, and there's nothing impossible about it. Such pitiful murders aren't worthy of Beatrice-sama at all. Ferudo, Erica. An unexpected crime and an unexpected woman. And the unexpected man from 19 years ago. And if you add in the fact that Battler's already solved the epitaph, this game is completely different from normal. What the heck is going on? Let's go. Yao, Nesama. Why the fuck are they suddenly the Greek chorus? 
Yeah, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> the the demons have a very different role in this too. Yeah. Once they've been revealed as Nazi, he's like fucking comfort characters, right? Mm. Now now they're just like not even But but are the stakes? We haven't seen her in the stakes. That's true, that's true, that's true. And the, and the stakes are talking about something rather different. Yeah, they are. The Nazis thing did. Hmm, indeed. In the kitchen, Goto was preparing a wonderful breakfast at a brisk pace. The main dish would be herb omelets. Even simple foods could become an invigorating feast under Goto's skillful hands. He would pre-cook everything beforehand and prepare the food in the dining hall right before everyone's eyes. <laughs> pun, 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 pun. Goto hummed as he continued to work in high spirits. <laughs> it just came out a few years ago and I'm just really smitten with it. <laughs> when Shannon, who was helping out, saw Goda like this, her mood also brightened. She arranged the salad in a neat little pattern and showed it to Goda. How is this? I think it makes the tomato look a bit cute. Oh yeah, that's very nice. You really know what you're doing, Shannon Son. <laughs> and then you do the, like the like the do 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 It's a real banger. The two happy people gave each other a high five. That Lambda's not even fucking trying. I like Lambda's not even trying to make this like make so, like, the characters barely fit their own arc. This literally is they just... They never got a log in the previous yeah, ones. This literally is just murder without story. Lambda sucks at this. Lambda's I, the worst D GM. There, there is story, though. We're getting a bunch with Natsuhi and so on. Oh, my We're God. We're getting a bunch with the whole Kinzo's dead situation. Yeah, so why... Yeah, but that's all it's stuff that's the outside the game board. Line. That's all stuff she can't change. That's all written in stone. The stuff that she has to come up with herself sucks. Hmm. But, like, it's clearly meant to. Shannon didn't like Goto when he was sneaky, but she had no problems at all with him when he was cooking happily. She sometimes even thought that it'd be nice if his contract hadn't included any jobs besides cooking. It would have been nice if his contract didn't include any jobs besides cooking. So Goto does have other jobs besides cooking. Yeah, he's a servant. Yeah, he's still a servant. Right, yeah, okay. If that had been the case, he wouldn't have had to get in a bad mood doing unnecessary jobs. Oh, the dining hall is ready. You can carry it in whenever you want. Oh, we're almost good to go, so please get the serving card ready, all right? Mm -hmm. Without thinking, even Kumasawa caught Goda's high spirits. The kitchen had a very nice smell and atmosphere about it, truly refreshing for so early in the morning. Then Cannon came back, grumpy, even this early in the morning, just like he always was. Cannon and Genji were in charge of getting many things ready for the morning, such as opening the curtain. However, Cannon was alone today, so it had taken much longer than usual. I'm finally done. Wh where is Genji-sama? He still isn't here. That's odd. I can't imagine he'd sleep in. <laughs> I guess even Genji-sama sleeps in sometimes. Ooh. Well, that's rather careless of him, considering that this is the middle of a family conference. Kanan-san, could you wake him up for us? Yes, right away. Uh, I wonder what Genji-san's face looks like when he's half asleep. Woohoo! Let me go with you. Hmm, really? Kumasawa doesn't want Kanan to see that alone, huh? Hmm. hmm. Even though Goda had asked her to get the serving cart ready, Kumasawa plotted off after Cannon, slyly skipping work. Okay, so that's how they that's how they kind of allied what was happening there. Because mm -hmm. Kumasawa loves to skip out on work, right? Nothing to see here. <laughs> As Cannon muttered about how Goda was the one who slept in all the time, he headed for the servant waiting room. Oh, she didn't wake him up this morning, Cannon Sean. <sighs> Last night I fell asleep while still in the servant room, so I didn't return until to the waiting room. Last night, Cannon had dozed off while in the middle of his late night shift, falling asleep in the servant room. Shannon had been kind enough to put a blanket on him, but that had just made it so warm that he fell into an even deeper sleep. 
So he hadn't returned to his bed in the servant waiting room the previous night. Because of that, he hadn't met Genji even once this morning. There was a knock on the door. Uh, Genji-sama? It's Kanan. Uh, good morning. Uh, oh my. I wonder if he's still sleeping in there. <sighs> Pardon me. When he tried to open the door, Kanan noticed something strange on the upper part of it. What? Packing tape. A small strip of packing tape was stuck along the frame of the door. Almost as though it was sealing the door shut. Furthermore, there were notches made with scissors along the center of the packing tape, so that if you open the door only a slight amount, it would be torn apart. Also, written sloppily across the packing tape with a thin pen was what appeared to be someone's signature. It was written in a very intricate and decorative manner, so even if it was a signature, there was no way of telling whose it was. Ooh, it's probably some sort of prank. I don't get it, but it's no use worrying about it now. Uh, Genji-sama, pardon me. The packing tape tore apart and he opened the door. It wasn't as though anything happened when it split, so the two quickly forgot about that strange tape. The room was dimly lit. The lower bed of the two-level bunk bed still had a lump under the blanket. Interesting. So there's a two-level bunk bed in the servant room. Okay. Apparently Genji was still sleeping. Uh, good morning, Genji-sama. Bro, oh, this isn't like you. Ooh. It's morning. <gasps> uh, Gen Genji-sama. Oh, what's this? What's this? Ooh. There was a large black red stain on the blanket. Even the servants' blankets were always kept clean. A stain like that definitely shouldn't have been there. Kenan hesitantly peeled back Genji's blanket saw what was left of him, and was shocked into silence. What the heck? His neck's been cut open too? It's thin. You wouldn't be able to leave a cut this deep without a fairly long blade. What's going on? Battlers solved the riddle of the epitaph, right? Why are there murders happening? I don't know. In any event, this isn't good. We should report this to Beidra-sama and Natsuhi-sama. Belfa, hurry and report it to Luchine. Understood. Is Kumasawa summoning the... Hmm. Fake? Huh. Alright. After dashing out, Kumasawa called Gota and Shannon over. Then this new pair let out screams identical to the first two. Ma! Ma! No! Don't stop making breakfast, Goda! It's not really the time to be saying that. There's no chance I'll have a quiet and peaceful breakfast on the second day. I had a bad feeling about this. Genji might not be the only one. Let's check the entire mansion. Something else might have happened. Yes, Onesama. What a fucking weird chapter. Yeah? I gotta, I gotta admit, though, it feels like no two chapters really feel like they're, they're the same, huh? Yep. Natsuhi he sprang awake at the sudden sound of the phone. Even Natsuhi he was surprised that she'd woken up. She thought she'd spent the whole night unable to sleep out of fear that the mysterious man might come in at any moment. But she dozed off before she knew it. Of course, Natsuhi he still didn't feel rested at all. Though she groaned from the dull pain in her head, which hadn't gone away since once since last night, she managed to get out of bed. What the fuck? So Natsuhi is summoning the stakes too. Good morning, Natsuhi-sama. Morning. And what a horrible morning it is. Don't worry. No one tried to enter this room. I see. Thanks for keeping watch all night. Even so, that didn't mean she'd been able to sleep peacefully. The continued ringing of the phone made her headache throb even more strongly. I think you should probably answer the phone. <sighs> And then I got some bad news to report for my sisters. Let's leave the bad news for later. I'll answer the phone first. Natsuhi he shook her head to wake herself up and picked up the receiver. Then she regretted not listening to Lucifer's bad news first. Because she wanted the first thing she heard on this horrible morning to be something better than this. <laughs> Good morning, mother. Did you sleep well? 
And that voice told her that this horrible morning, this nightmare would not stop. I kept my promise. I've been holed up in this room the whole time. Of course, I haven't been on the phone either. But you did pick up the phone just now, did you not? Well, uh... <laughs> just kidding. This is just a morning call I'm giving my beloved mother. Good morning, mother. <laughs> How far do you intend to mock me? Natsuhi gripped the receiver so hard it cracked. I wanted you to leave your seat so that I could set up for the party. Thanks to that, everything is ready now. Of course, you are the main guest, mother. What are you planning to do? <laughs> that is for you to look forward to. Do not worry, I will not keep you waiting. It has already begun, after all. Oh, right, wait a sec. There's someone I want you to hear first. Huh? There was the sound of the receiver being jolted around. The phone was apparently being passed to someone else, but there was a clunking, clattering noise, so it was taking a lot of effort to hand the receiver over. Who in the world could he be giving the phone to? No matter who this man who he gives the phone to, that can't be good news for me. Ah, uh, untie me, coward! Who the fuck is talking? Oh. Nah, untie me, coward! Huh? Dear, is that you? Nah. Nah. No. Untie it. Untie it. It was without a doubt the voice of her husband. However, he didn't respond to Natsuhi's voice. Perhaps he was bound somewhere in the darkness. Or perhaps it was a tape recording of his voice. Hm. Krauss, not realizing that Natsuhi was on the other end of the phone, repeatedly demanded that he be untied. Your husband is here. His eyes and his ears are covered, so you won't be able to talk, but I think you can tell that he's in perfect health. What are you after? Yeah, yeah, it's it's ob it, it feels too obvious? Yeah. Right? Because the game already primed us for this. And that, that feels like too obvious an explanation. Huh. Let my husband go. <laughs> I will let him go tomorrow. If you keep two promises, that is. What are they? One is that you keep a secret that I have your husband in my care. There will probably be a fuss when they're unable to find Kraus anywhere in the mansion. But you know nothing. So, they will, so you will say nothing. Understand? I understand. What's your other condition? Oh, just a little game. <laughs> At one o'clock today... You will go into the foremost guest room on the first floor of the mansion and hide in the closet. <laughs> a guest room? Why should I go into a closet? Just a little hide and seek. If you can hide there for an hour without anyone finding you, you win. If someone does find you, you lose. And if I lose, what happens? Nothing in particular. Is that not what playing is all about? If you play along with this hide and seek, We'll release your husband tomorrow. Will you really keep that promise, I wonder? Of course. Make sure you do, mother. If you break our promise, I will know right away. At that time, there was suddenly a loud knock on the door to Natsuki's room. Her heart leapt automatically. Uh, madam, are you there? Uh, good morning. Well, let's go run, Cannon, madam. Please wake up. Hard read. Yeah. The Godas coming from across the door were cannons and Godas. The knock had been wild and the voices a little shrill. It seemed that something strange had happened and they were agitated. What is it? Did something happen? Uh... Oh. 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 What is it? Did something happen? It's nothing. It looks like the servants have arrived. I'm hanging up. Sure. I've said everything I wanted to. So, do not break our promise. I understand. And you don't break our promise either. You have it wrong. That is for you to decide, mother. Do not make me break my promise, mother. Ah. 
I'll be watching you all day to day, mother. <laughs> Lambda Delta slammed the receiver down on the antique phone. Then the phone exploded into bits and became a golden splash. And then a cloud of gold butterflies. And then disappeared. <laughs> Dance for me, Natsuhi. Dance in fear of your sin 19 years ago. My turn's going pretty well. Okay, your turn now, Burn. <laughs> this game is just so artless. You prefer an artful murder, I take it. Yeah. I see, I see. I'll file that away in the memory books. Right? Ooh, wait, hold on, hold on. What the fuck? New new pursuit theme. Yeah, I don't think I've heard this. Oh, this fucks. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yo, if we don't figure this out, would, would someone in the uh, comment section let us know what track this is? Because th this is this is absolutely a Ace Attorney pursuit theme right here. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure this is a waste of time, but let me confirm whether correspondence with the outside world, including reporting this to the police, is possible or not. It's impossible to make use of the external line. Looks like you can use the internal line. It's impossible to use a boat inside the typhoon. I guess the closed circle is complete now. Congrats, you're a full detective now, Burn. When the police intervene, they sometimes steal some of the detective's authority. However, with the construction of a closed circle, the existence of the police had been denied for all eternity. <laughs> Lambda Delta says there's no such thing as cops. Oh, wow. Oh, I, oh, all right. I guess that's some kind of practice, huh? <laughs> From now on, the authority of the detective piece will be totally guaranteed. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a bunch. Then I guess it's time to get this game started. Erica, you're the main character. Now begin. Mm, even Genji saw. Five people have been killed. Yes. And it was so horrible. To think that even though I had the midnight shift, I, I didn't notice anyone suspicious. Don't blame yourself. If you bumped into the culprit, you might be the one dead right now. On top of that, the phones aren't even connected. I doubt any boats will come in this weather. This is serious. And that makes it very likely that the culprit's still nearby. Uh, uh, then what? Ooh, does that mean we'll be trapped down here with a murderer until the typhoon passes and the boat comes? Ooh. Uh, it'll be okay. If we all stay together like this, even the culprit won't be able to lay a finger on us. Even Jessica? I can't believe it. We won't let ourselves be killed. I'll avenge George. I won't let them get away. No matter who the culprit is or what their reason was, I won't let the one who killed George get away. I'll kill them. I'll kill them. <gasps> <gasps> Everyone, uh, are you are you done crying yet? Okay, silence, please. <laughs> Has anyone seen Kraus on yet? We've been calling him for a while, but he hasn't answered. Ooh, could the receiver be off the hook? No, we could hear it ringing. There's no way he didn't hear it. What does it mean? You don't think Uncle Kraus too? <sighs> Figures. I hate to say it at a time like this, but there were four in the guest house plus Genji to make five. I figured there would be one more. Yeah, of course you would, Kyria. Yep. Why? How could you know that? Are you the culprit? Did you kill George? Well, stop it, Abishan. Now is not the time. Ava got agitated and grabbed at Kyria. Nanja stepped in between them and it grew into a bit of a scuffle. Watching this, Erica smiled condescendingly and shrugged. Of course, it's natural that you'd guess there were six victims after seeing the crime scene in the guest house. There were only four corpses, so it'd make you wonder who the other two were. How could you know such a thing? You killed them? You killed George? Quit it, Ava. Erica-chan, Kyrie-san, how can you know that? 
Can't you think before you talk? It's a simple connection to make, actually. The scribble drawn at the scene of the crime in the guest house was a magic circle. I tried to think of things connected to both magic and murders. Even Kyrie's very normally on point and well reasoned deductions feel like they lack oomph. Hmm. You know, it, feel, it feels like the, these characters were written by someone who only had their personalities vaguely described to them. Hmm. Yeah, it, it just. And I, I gotta think that's intentional, right? Yeah. Because everyone's being so fucking blatant and artless about stuff. It's just. It's funny. <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny, honestly. Lambda Delta sucks as a GF, is what I'm getting at. <laughs> ah, so it's the epitaph, huh? I see. The first twilight. Huh? <laughs> What's going on? Ooh. Well, I don't have a clue either. Is that how it is? That dumb witch. So this is really Beatrice Sama's doing? Why do you all keep talking as if you know something? I don't have a clue. Someone explain it to me. I told you, Ava. Calm down a bit. Yeah, that's how it is. Ever since I saw the magic circle at that crime scene. I imagine this might be a plotline murder following the epitaph's first twilight, which would mean that there are six victims. Simply by the existence of the magic circle in that place, this level of reasoning is possible for Frodo, Erica. What do you think, everyone? <laughs> High fives? High fives, yeah? Woo! Detective's Authority says you can't not high-five me. Detective's Authority says you have to high-five this. <laughs> and also give me any of your stimulants. <laughs> Woo! What? It's the Sherlock Holmes type, right? I'm just trying to fit in the archetype. Don't look at me weird. <laughs> Erica doing lines of bath salts in between deductions here while the entire Ushiromiya family politely looks on as though everything's normal. It's just politely grieving in the background. <laughs> Shh! Not so loud! I'm getting a good buzz off this one. <laughs> so Uncle Kraus was also killed? We can't be sure of that. kraus isn't the only person who hasn't come here, right? There's one more. For just an instant, Natsuhi's brow furrowed, so she hadn't been able to avoid the topic of study after all. You... D oh, is this her? Yep. She doesn't call Hinzo dad, though, does she? You don't mean dad? Hey, someone wants to contact the study, right? Of course we called, and even knocked on the door, but there was no answer. Oh, that's part of the servants. Father is immersing himself in his research. He, he sometimes leaves the receiver off the hook because he doesn't want to be called and even ignores any knocking. Oh, but the phone was ringing. Anyway, let's first check to see that my husband's safe. Let's go to his room. Not so he stood up in a flurry and dashed out into the corridor. Rudolph and the others immediately chased after her, telling her to wait. <laughs> Come on, let's all go together. In both third rate mysteries and third rate horrors, people who act alone tend to die first. Yeah, this game is just the same. Beato is really third rate. <laughs> oh, they're doing it to get a rise out of Beato. <laughs> oh, that's why they're doing it. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> oh, but in third rate disaster movies and third rate action movies, people who act alone do survive, right? Eh, weird. <laughs> Even though, is this supposed to be? I guess. What the hell? Even though the epitaph has already been solved, who's behind this farce? <sighs> it might be the work of this man from 19 years ago who was thought to be Lady Lambda Delta's piece. Ah, uh, yes, that can't be true. <laughs> the game's up until now. Beto has already started the state of the Kinzo vanished. Even that no more than 17 people exist, no 18th person exists. Now that Erica's been added, it's stated that no 19th person exists. There's no room for this man from 19 years ago to appear on the island. So the man from 19 years ago is disguised as one of the existing humans. Or else? 
<laughs> Even if a 19th person isn't permitted by the red, slipping in a 19th person is no trouble for me. No trouble for witches. Now it's getting interesting. Why don't we watch this a little longer? Still, those two witches have finally started to do whatever they please with my game board, haven't they? Didn't you know that would happen when you invited them? Hmm. As a witch, I have the same dislike for boredom that they do. Even the unexpected brings the kind of joy a witch expects. Very well, bring it on. It's great that you're so eager, but things have taken a nasty turn, get it? <sighs> Indeed. Perhaps this isn't the best time to wait and see what happens next. I know that. At this rate, Kinzo's existence will become an issue once again, and the barrier around the study won't last long. That isn't all. Things are going to get even worse. See? Move one, move two, move three. And then you're cornered, Natsuhi. The Gap whispered something into Beato's ear. Beato's mouth slowly widened into a grin. Erika, bringing everyone together is actually convenient for us. All darkness outside the range of observers belongs to us demons. This may be the only time to make that move. Natsuhi is the king. She can't move far, but we cannot allow her to be taken. Let's take the initiative. If we slip up here, Natsuhi will be cornered. The Gap, can I count on you? <laughs> of course. I'll blow a hole through the closed room tricks, alibis, and mysteries alike. Leave it to me and I'll handle it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess if you can get where you want by floor portals, right? <laughs> Floortals, if you will. Oh my god, and I will. <laughs> <sighs> the Gap was swallowed up along with the chair as she sat on sat in into a pitch black hole that opened on the floor and then disappeared. After that, a hole opened on the ceiling and spat just the chair back out, returning to the, pla way, the place the way it had been. <laughs> that's a pretty... That's so cute. That's such a flex. I love that, actually. No, that's really cool. I'm too lazy to get out of the chair, but I will put it back. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm lazy, not rude. <laughs> <sighs> this is becoming troublesome. <laughs> I see. Against Lady Lambda Delta, even I am nothing more than a mere piece. So, in the early game, I must worry more about expansion than taking or losing pieces. <laughs> I'm just no match for that person. I won't let her do that. Natsuhi is the final master I will serve. Know that this is a piece you'll never be allowed to take, so long as she has a contract with me, Beatrice. All right, everyone, roll for initiative. <laughs> Krause's room was empty. The bed was, too. But massive bloodstains similar to the other crime scenes remained. But there was no corpse. Nope. And he isn't dead. Maybe not. <laughs> oh, this is the first time we've seen inside Krause's room. Yeah. What is going on? Where is Nissan? I'm judging by this bloodstained bed. I don't like to think about it, but we should probably assume that he was killed and had his neck cut open. It's like the people in the guest house. Probably, judging by the amount of blood lost, it's hard to imagine that he's okay. Boo, 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 where did Crouch Sama go? Large amounts of blood stained to the top of the bed, but there were no similar marks on the floor of the room. Whether Krauss had been seriously wounded and wandered off somewhere, or killed and carried somewhere, they had no clear where this somewhere might be. Hmm. Well, we suspect he's probably dead anyway. Yeah. Interesting. Are those records? Could be. He's got quite an office up here. It's it's interesting, though, that even if he is killed and carried off, they were really careful about it in a way that makes a huge mess here. Yep. But that doesn't make a huge mess anywhere outside of the bed. Yep, because they want to make it clear that he's been... Or make, sell the idea that he's been killed. But they want to not leave a body so that Nazi he can believe that he's still alive. Right? Because hmm. as long as Nazi he believes Krauss is still alive, she'll go along with whatever the person on the phone says. Yep. But 
He's probably not, right? Probably. <laughs> not so he knew. Though Krauss had been sounding far from his best over the phone, at least he hadn't sounded like he was on the brink of death. In other words, these blood scenes had to be a setup. That might not even be blood. However, just what was that man thinking? What was this supposed to be? What the heck? So, on the first twilight, there were six sacrifices? Was Kraus Nissan in the habit of locking his door? We just came in without unlocking it. Yes, Kraus Sama was also in the habit of locking up. Well, at this house, Madam had ordered that all non-public areas be locked. Interesting. All non-public areas be locked? That would probably be important at some point. How many keys can unlock Uncle Krause's room? In addition to the one key Kraus Sama held, there's the master keys. Oh, all that stuff about keys is a pointless argument. Did you forget that Genji-san is already a victim? His master key is probably missing. Oh, yeah, his, his master key is missing. That means all the locks of this mansion are meaningless. How boring. In other words, no closed room murders have existed or will exist in this mansion. Ugh. It's going to be a pretty boring mystery. Erica laughed off this murder in disappointment, as though it was something she was watching on TV. I can't understand it. Why is her world so different from ours? It's almost like she's in a separate dimension from us. Was Jessica also... Like this in a bed? <sighs> yes, that's right. Just like George, her neck was cut. Jessica. Let me be with Jessica. I haven't even seen Jessica's face yet. Jessica, Jessica! Wait up, Natsuhi Sand. The comfort must still be hard on your bar. It would be dangerous to let her bar all home. Natsu, he flew out of the room and dashed towards the guest house this time. It was only natural. Natsu, he still hadn't even seen Jessica's dying face. Everyone probably thought that. Of course, even Natsu, he was half thinking that. The other half was her desire to shift everyone else's attention away from the study. Strange crimes had occurred, the gold had been discovered, and some relatives had even been recommended Battler to be the successor. Even in these twisted circumstances, she had to protect Kinzo's secret. If my head is going to be racked by this suffering anyway, please just let my head explode right now. My bombs. That way I won't have to suffer any longer. So, everyone, for Natsuki's on sake, let's return to the guest house for the time being, alright? Those not as though seeing their dead faces are going to lead to any new developments. Do you even have a heart? A heart? <laughs> What's that? Dick. <laughs> <gasps> Just seeing her daughter's dead face wouldn't bring Jessica back to life, nor would it heal Natsuhi's anguish. On the contrary, she would probably wail, wasting a considerable amount of time before being able to think properly again. This probably sums up Erica's screwed up argument. Just seeing their dying faces won't lead to any new developments. Like hell it won't. <laughs> Beato's pieces have brought about a really interesting change. <laughs> what in the... Natsuhi he flew into the cousin room on the second floor of the guest house and was struck dumb by the blood-stained beds in the eerie magic circle, which looked like it might have been drawn with the victim's blood. Where is Jessica? Where is she? Jessica! In that bed right there. A bed? Where? Huh? George? Where is he? Wow. Wait a sec. What the hell is going on here? <coughs> we made sure to lock this room when we left, right? We can now be certain that the culprit has a master key. Once again, my reasoning was correct. Who cares about that? Where did they go? Where did everyone's corpses go? <laughs> nice trick. Hey, look, look, it's magic, right? That the Gap who's with Beato hid the corpses somewhere with magic. 
All of us move together. Is she trying to say that everyone had alibis? Your reasoning goes like this, right? The four of them weren't actually dead. They were just playing dead. Then when no one else was around, they hid somewhere. Am I right? You don't pretend to proclaim any of their deaths in red, do you? Of course I won't. Unlike that dolt Beato, I don't give red out for free. In that case, I'll be glad to use the blue. I can think of many ways to look around something of this level. <laughs> sure, go ahead. Blue truth time. Here's the first one I can think of. Victims aren't actually dead. They pretended to be dead and secretly hid themselves somewhere. After all, you haven't proclaimed everyone's, anyone's death with the red truth. <laughs> Even though you've been shown their gaping wounds, you're still trying that one on principle as long as there's no red, right? But don't get your hopes up. I'm not giving you a freebie, Red Truth. After all, I just have to deny it all at once at the end of the game at 2400 on October 5th. Interesting. So that is when it ends. Okay, cool. Ah, the witch's side has such a big advantage. It'd all be over now if that stupid battler was my opponent. But you aren't like that, right, Burn? Right? You're way cooler and I, cuter. I... What? <laughs> what? What was that second one? Don't worry about it. Okay. Of course. Anyone could have thought of that silly move. I have more. Second one. Kraus carried the corpses off and hid them. He acted it out so that it looks like he kidnapped Kraus and locked him up somewhere, but he might actually be free. Kraus has no alibi. Kraus hid their corpses. Yeah, that's right. It's not like I proclaimed that Kraus was being confined with the red truth. <laughs> You know how they say you gotta confuse your friends before you can confuse your enemies? We're so, not friends. We're more than friends? What? I don't... I feel like there's something going on here that I'm not <laughs> privy to. So, he lied to Natsuhi, making it seem like he'd been captured. <laughs> Any others? Third one. The corpses were different people in the first place. They were substitute corpses that closely resembled the victims. George and the others were hiding from the beginning and later cleared up those substitute corpses. These corpses were dead from the very beginning, so they don't count towards the number of people on the island. <laughs> That's messed up! So, even though all these people gathered around and saw their dead faces, none of them realized they were substitute corpses? Since you still haven't used the red truth, there's a possibility that everyone misidentified all of the corpses. Although if you feel like repeating, no one would misidentify a person. I'll withdraw that claim immediately, okay? No way! I'm not Follick for that. The Red Truth's only useful if you use it with Flash, right? Too bad they took it out of the browsers. <laughs> I'll take a single truth out of a large pile of blue and smash it with the red. Then the rest of the blue truths will be swallowed up by darkness before you can find out whether they were right or wrong. That darkness is the world of witches. You won't be given any truth at all. <laughs> <laughs> this girl acts like she's stupid, but she's not bad at all. She'll never rise to propagation. Looks like she understands the darkness of magic even better than the true game master, Beato. And apparently the Gap also understood that well. That move of hiding the corpses. It was pretty effective for both Lambda and Beato. In any event, I've thought up a full three theories about the disappearing corpses. Three blue wedges for a single riddle. That doesn't mean she can just deny one of those three. Unless she eliminates all three wedges, this riddle has been defeated. That's the ironclad rule of witch hunting. A single wedge isn't nearly enough. Only vampires die from a single stake. Compared to witches, vampires are weak. True witches won't die unless you stab them all over with stakes, right? The same with assassins, isn't it? It's only in Japanese manga that you see assassins kill their targets with a single perfect shot. Real assassins will empty out an entire magazine's worth of bullets. That's how you do things, right? Of course, it's the same for me. But it's this girl we're talking about, so she might slice it all in two with a single swipe of the red. By simply letting off a few quick lines confirming their deaths and Krauss's innocence with the red, she can remove all three of my wedges. Well, that's okay. When the red truth does come out, I just need to follow along with it and stab her full of blue wedges again. You know, if you haven't figured out how to play yet, <laughs> here we are, chapter five. This is how a game of witches plays out. 
Oh, it's so much fun. Battler sluggish battles always pissed me off, so I'm loving this. Yeah, I understand, Lambda. This first twilight is just the beginning of the beginning. It's just a skirmish, right? <laughs> Wouldn't happen any other way. I'll make you lose pathetically and cry out in regret as you crawl and scratch at the floor. I've almost forgotten the pleasure of grabbing that cute hair of yours and wiping the floor with it as I roll around laughing. The servant waiting room in the mansion had once again gone silent. There lay Genji's corpse which had been covered completely with a blanket. In the ceiling of this cramped room a pitch black hole appeared, captivating legs sprouted out, and the gap floated downwards. <laughs> sorry Genji. You probably want to enjoy your eternal sleep right there, but that's not going to be possible. Please disappear from this place so you may serve Natsuhi, the final head of the Ushiromiya family, even after death. The gap stripped off the blanket she, as she said this to Genji, who was sleeping peacefully. Then she stared at the deep wound in his neck. It's a nice cut. Must have been made with a single slice. Anyone who's capable of this manifested yet? That's not good. I can't think of anyone decent who might be capable of this. It goes without saying, but witches are capable of summoning beings with a strength proportional to their own ability. The great Lady Lambda Delta called that being here as a trump card, 19th person. Even optimistically speaking, this is on par with Rono, Ronove and me. A pitch black hole opened on the bed, and Genji disappeared as though the bed had swallowed him up. Just like the four in the guest house, Genji's corpse was also hidden in some unknown place. It was a place that no one could find, located neither within this world or the next. No longer would anyone be able to find their corpses. No longer would anyone be able to confirm their deaths. She carried Genji's corpse to this place of endless silence, where it would never be disturbed. When there's no corpse, a person goes missing. When a person is missing, both people suspect that they might be the culprit and suspect they might be the victims, truly like the inside of a cat box. The darkness inside of cat boxes can never be opened. It's where we demons and witches reside. You're a bit too slow, Miss Great Detective. <laughs> the Gap licked her lips and gulped. I wonder why Gap Sama is going around hiding corpses. I don't know, but Gapsama is pretty cool. The Gapsama. I'm sorry, I didn't use her proper title. She's just so awesome. Don't be stupid. What happened to standing guard? The humans are returning from the guest house. The Gapsama. Yeah, let's disperse. This should be enough to give Natsuhi a way out. The Gap jumped into a pitch black hole that had opened near her feet. Mammon said, I'm going in too, and then jumped in. Followed by Asmo, who said, Me too, me too, and hopped in giggling. As Satan hesitated over what to do, the hole closed. And you call yourselves members of the Seven Sisters of Purgatory. How childish. So stupid. I'm getting out of here. Satan went bright red and got angry all by herself, and then turned into cold butterflies and disappeared. Seems the gap has succeeded in moving the five corpses. Well done. However, the next part is tricky. It's G to rock a rhyme. <laughs> or to rock a rhyme that's right on time. <laughs> they will probably be This is Ronave. Oh. They will probably be somewhat surprised at the disappearance of Genji's corpse, but their interest will most likely swing back to Kinzo's study after that. There are two keys to the study. It's fortunate that Natsuhi is in possession of both. If she had left one with Genji, it would probably have fallen into Lady Lambda Delta's hands by now. It seems that Lady Lambda Delta has no intention of hiding Kinzo's death. Apparently she plans to fight while ignoring the moat towers and ramparts that you have created. <laughs> This has become a strange, triangular confrontation. We are all each other's enemies, but we will sometimes join forces without notice. In a three-way fight, just when you notice it's two against one, it suddenly becomes one against two. That's what it's like. That Chinese battle royale. Don't you think it's like that Records of the Three Kingdoms thing? Oh, the Long Zhong plan. That's quite a sophisticated analogy to hear coming from you. 
There were three empires, and the records of the three kingdoms, weren't there? Wei, Wu, and Shu, right? That sounds just like us. So, which empire won out in the end? The power that gained control in the end was the Jin Dynasty. The three empires you mentioned were all destroyed. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought one of the three empires won. Didn't the Wei have an overwhelming advantage? <laughs> They had the position of emperor stolen from them, and their empire was subjugated and destroyed. The Sima clan, a noble family that Cao Cao had invited in as advisors, eventually gained central control in a power struggle and took over the country. So, they were invited in as advisors, and they seized control. <laughs> Very interesting. That Lady Lambda Delta? <laughs> I haven't actually read it for myself, but I did play Fire Emblem Three Houses, which is close enough, I feel. <laughs> it's basically the same thing, right? Pardon me. I mean, it is basically the same thing, so you're fine. Don't worry about it. The humans have confirmed the disappearance of Genji's corpse in the servant waiting room. He started moving towards Lord Goldsmith's study. <laughs> Beecha! They're coming! <laughs> Let them come. The humans and the witches of certainty and miracles. If this is a three-way fight, then we've got humans and witches and... What should we be called? The thing we're protecting for the time being is Kinza's phantom. So, are we phantoms then? <laughs> what a great game this is. Yeah. Oh man, I can't wait to see more of this. I am I am loving every single moment of being back in this game. Hell yeah. Yeah, I, I cannot wait to play more. Uh, We'll see you next time. Uh, This will be going up on Friday. So we'll see you on Monday for another episode. And this will be our Monday Friday series going forward. So look forward to twice weekly Human Echo. Woo! Don't look sad, Natsuhi. So you get to come back twice a week. <laughs> and then die. And then come back. And then, and then die. die. And it, then it, it, okay, you can be a little sad. You can be a little bit sad about that. Smash, smash, smash that like. Comment and subscribe.